Even if you're not a huge fan of the Olympics, you probably know that the athletes stay at the Olympic Village, a campus created specifically for the Games. But what happens in the athletes' new home away from home? Here's what really goes on at the Olympic Village. It wouldn't be a 2021 event without COVID-19, unfortunately, so let's start there. What happened at the Olympic Village in Tokyo before the Games even started is the spread of the coronavirus. As noted by Reuters, the isolation bubble system that organisers of the Games were counting on to protect the athletes staying at the Olympic Village was quickly compromised. Given that it takes a negative COVID-19 test to even take part in the athletes' designated Olympic event, the spreading of the coronavirus was definitely not good news to the competitors. Organisers announced that before the Games began, dozens of cases of the coronavirus had been confirmed. Thomas Bach, the International Olympic Committee president, maintained that the testing and isolation measures in place created a zero-risk environment for athletes staying at the Olympic Village. But clearly, that is not the case. The term Olympic Village seems to scream a certain level of luxury, right? Well, the reality seems to be different. According to ESPN, the Olympic Village in Tokyo made quite the splash in the news because of the cardboard beds and polyethylene mattresses that were featured in the rooms. What influenced such a decision? Sustainability. The Olympic Committee committed to recycling the paper product-based beds after the Games conclude, which is definitely a great initiative, but an interesting choice for the housing of some of the world's greatest athletes. However, the Olympic villages of the past might not have been as fancy as you'd expect either. Olympian Natalie Coughlin told People that one of the biggest misconceptions that audiences have is that the Olympic village is luxurious. I think they think it's a lot more glamorous than it is. It's really pretty boring. Some athletes are known for their intense calorie intake, while others are known for adhering to strict diets. Either way, the food demand within the Olympic Village is wild. As reported by Japan Today, the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Village prepared to feed 18,000 people. About 48,000 meals were estimated to be served on a daily basis, and some dining options have to stay open at all hours of the day, given the schedules of the athletes. There are 700 menu options within the Olympic Village Dining Hall, 2,000 staff members and 3,000 seats in the main cafeteria alone. The dining options at the Tokyo Games were categorised as Japanese, Western and Asian and will feature plenty of local flavour. The Olympic Games are full of exciting and emotional moments. From the amazing athletic performances to the opening and closing ceremonies, there's a lot to watch and celebrate, especially for the athletes that medal. According to Olympians Mallory Wegerman and Elise Willoughby, who dished about the Games to delish, the Olympic Village is where much of the Games post-win celebrations happen. While alcohol is not served at the Olympic Village dining hall, nor is it sold within Olympic Village at the Tokyo Games, athletes can still bring some in with them. Will it be revealed? There are usually plenty of options available for celebrations at the team houses that are definitely taken advantage of. When it's a time for a celebratory toast, you go with it. And in Rio, well, one Kuiperinia, two Kuiperinia, three Kuiperinia, floor. There's something about the camaraderie within the Olympic Village that sounds like a fantastic adult sleepover. Athletes are there with their friends, reunited with people they haven't seen in years in an international country competing. All of it sounds really exciting. But the Tokyo Olympics in 2021 were certainly different due to COVID-19, and some athletes abandoned the Olympic Village before the Games even began. As noted by the New York Post, members of the United States women's gymnastics team decided to forego the Olympic Village altogether and decided to stay in a local hotel instead. Coach Cecile Landy posted on Twitter, It was also a decision that we all made together. We know it isn't ideal for the Olympic experience, but nothing is ideal during a pandemic. We feel like we can control the athletes and our safety better in a hotel setting. According to AP News, the Tokyo Olympic Village opened its doors to athletes on July 13, 2021, 10 days before the Olympics opened. The actual village itself was made up of 21 residential towers, each offering between 14 and 18 floors of accommodation. In total, there are 3,600 rooms within the Olympic Village, with a total of 18,000 beds throughout. Now about the actual rooms themselves. 
AP News described them to be more like apartments, as they are about 1,200 square feet in size. Each unit can sleep approximately eight athletes, with some rooms offering a little bit less space and, as such, fewer beds. Approximately 11,000 athletes are expected to compete in the Olympic Games, so there should be room to spread competitors out so they're not all crammed in together. Due to COVID-19, athletes were asked to arrive as late as possible and leave as soon as they are able to. Unlike games of the past, where food seemed to be a bit of a free-for-all, the village in Tokyo was issued strict guidelines when it comes to preparing and serving food. You can eat whatever you like, as long as it adds up to 12,000 calories a day. Well, not those guidelines. While we touched on just how much food is served during the games, it should be noted that the meals at the Tokyo Games were instructed to be, quote, handled only by cooks and servers. There will be no buffet-style options, plastic barriers will separate athletes while they dine, and even the soft-serve soda handles will be covered in antivirus film in order to curb the spread of COVID-19. All of this might sound like a bit much, but according to Our World in Data, only 23% of people People in Japan are fully vaccinated against the novel coronavirus. When contextualized by the fact that only 13% of the world's total population had been inoculated by the start of the Games, the precautions make a ton of sense. During the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio, the Olympic Village consisted of 31 high-rise apartment buildings. Due to their location in the suburbs of Rio de Janeiro, the apartments were extremely visible. Athletes took to the outer surfaces of the buildings and planted their flags outside their designated apartments. As more and more countries displayed their colors, the Olympic Village turned into a jigsaw puzzle of country pride. As noted by the New York Times, it was up to Mario Salenti, the director of the Rio Olympic Village, to place athletes within the high-rise buildings. He did his best to situate countries with large delegations of athletes and then worked in smaller countries throughout the remaining space. Spectators were left with an array of flags draping the Olympic Village and Tokyo followed suit. From the amazing events to the wall-to-wall -wall coverage, it really seems as though the Olympic athletes are observed 24-7 during the Games. But there are still aspects of the event that viewers at home are not privy to, specifically the intimate relationships between athletes. While it's not a topic that concerns the audience, protecting athletes from STIs and unwanted pregnancies seems to be a priority when the Olympics comes around. What happens in the Olympic Village stays in the Olympic Village. According to AP News, 150,000 condoms were said to have been given out to athletes at the Tokyo Olympic Village for the 2020 Games. Takashi Kitajima, the Olympic Village general manager, said that handing out protection was part of an awareness campaign regarding HIV and AIDS. The purpose of distributing condoms is not just to use in the village, but to ask athletes to cooperate for the awareness of the issue by bringing the condoms back home to their countries. According to Olympian Natalie Coglin, the Olympic Village is pretty much just full of stressed out athletes. So many of us see the Olympics as this bright, glittering event that marks every two years with immense talent. But inside the Olympic Village are thousands of competitors who are painstakingly prepping for what could be the most important performance of their lifetime. Coglin told People, The Olympic Village is like a giant college campus, except that everyone is getting ready for the biggest event of their life, so they're incredibly stressed. They're really, really focused, and so everyone is 100% on their best behavior up until the time that they're done competing. Coglin even shared that once athletes have wrapped up all of their competitions, they typically leave the Olympic Village for the sake of the athletes who are still competing. After all, it's no fun watching the people around you party and celebrate when you still have more competition ahead. One of the amazing aspects about the Olympic Games is that each year a different country is chosen to host. Each Games looks a little different, and the same can be said for the Olympic Village. Athletes have dished about the difference between villages, and all of the options sound just as exciting as each other, according to People. For instance, Alexi Papas shared that during the Rio de Janeiro Games in 2016, there were, quote, free condoms, dance dance revolution, and all the limited edition athlete-only golden Coca-Cola bottles you can get your hands on. 
During the South Korea Games in 2018, the Olympic Village featured a number of McDonald's locations where athletes could purchase some of their favorite fast food items. Olympic runner Alison Felix told People that the common fast food joint was one of the most popular stops at the Olympic Village, and the line was already incredibly long. Sometimes when you're just across the world, you want something that you know exactly what it's going to taste like. The Olympic Village is one of the best places for athletes to socialize while competing at the Games. As Olympic swimmer Natalie Coughlin shared with People, of all the locations within the village, the cafeteria is by far the best place to be. Of course, the dining tables are great for chatting with fellow competitors, but Coughlin shared that the dining hall also provides amazing people-watching opportunities. It also provided her the chance to play one of her favorite pastimes trying to guess what sports someone at the village competes in just based on their appearance and body type. Comparing the dining hall to the size of a Costco, Coughlin said that the location within the village is by far where the action is. Of course, it also gives athletes a chance to run into some of sporting's biggest stars. Coughlin recalled that while competing in the 2012 Games in London, the entire room broke into applause when Usain Bolt entered the village. We've talked about just about everything that goes on in Olympic villages, but what happens when the Games end? Well, according to AP News, the apartment blocks built for the Tokyo Games will be sold to occupants once the Games are over. Hopefully, that plan will come to fruition, but we'd be remiss not to mention the amount of Olympic villages and Olympic arenas that have been abandoned after the Games come and go from a city. As reported by ABC News, a slew of Olympic villages have been left in various levels of decay for quite some time. For instance, the Olympic Village in Athens, Greece from the 2004 Games was used as a worker housing project, but now most of the buildings are abandoned or rarely used. The buildings used to house athletes during the 1936 Games in Berlin are completely decayed or deserted. And the Olympic Village used in the 2006 Games in Turin is abandoned too. Fingers crossed the Olympic Village in Tokyo is put to good use. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about the Olympics are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.